hello now part of the work the lord jesus has committed to my hand is to teach the word of righteousness now if you are a student of the word and you have taken your time to study the scriptures to understand the gospel of the lord jesus you realize that there is a lot of pollution in the church there are a lot of messages which are not in sync with the revelation of the gospel which was committed to paul and others now many people are mixing the old and the new testament when there was an argument in the early church as to what the behavior of the gentile church should do now paul understood the gospel to the extent that even the disciples who walked with christ couldn't understand and so it happened that there was a meeting and what happened they spelled out what the gentiles should do the jew christians the jewish christians the christians who were jews they knew that they cannot force their culture on the gentiles sadly even today there are many christian churches who are ardent practitioners of the old covenant that is a disaster that is not a gospel now when you go into the scriptures you realize that they told them what the gentiles should do they say that it is true we cannot force the gentiles to do things like the ceremonial things the washings issues of um circumcision and stuff like that the only thing they told them was that they should refrain they shouldn't commit fornication they shouldn't be um, eating food which are of blood you know what it means is that um if you kill an animal let the blood drain even that one is for their health and all that strangled animals and those things it is just for their health and stuff like that they knew that they should abstain from immorality fornication and stuff like that but they did not hang the old testament on their neck they understood that when someone becomes a christian jesus has broken the middle wall of the partition the veil is gone and we have access to god now why am i saying this today you realize that people don't even know what sin is let me read this in romans chapter 14 verse 14 i know and i'm persuaded by the lord jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself there is nothing unclean of itself but to him that esteems anything to be unclean to him it is unclean listen we have to understand the context of the text that is very important but we can also make certain deductions and generalizations from where we read now one thing that we we can say from this that a christian who thinks that something is a sin for instance if a christian thinks that playing music is a sin or dancing is a sin according to the bible there is nothing unclean but if you think it's unclean it's unclean unto you you see we are talking about things that the bible have not said the i mean for instance it is clear from the bible that fornication is not um it's a sin it says don't let it be once named among you issues of adultery stealing and all those things in fact if someone is born again and the spirit of god is in him or her he or she does not practice those things and even in case he sins 
because he is not supposed to sin. In case he sins, we have an advocate. According to 1 John chapter 2, verse 1, some people, if something happens and they fall or they sin, they just break down, they don't go back to God, and Satan gets them and destroys them. I don't want to go into that because Satan can destroy you in the flesh or in the soul, in the realm of the soul, but not your spirit because your spirit is sealed. I don't want to go into that because that is not the focus. But what, what I'm saying is that you can create your own sins, even though it is not a sin. Anything that is not a sin, if you think it's a sin, according to the Bible, it becomes a sin unto you. <laughs> you have to understand this. If earring is not a sin, and you think it's a sin, it becomes a sin unto you. And so you can have a dream. And you have gone to hell because of that because it has become a personal sin you see we have to understand there is nothing unclean in itself but if you think it's unclean it becomes unclean to you of course i've said earlier there are the general issues that are clear from the scriptures but there are others that the bible have not said they are sin but if you think it's a sin it's a sin unto you drumming is not a sin it can become a sin if you think it's a sin Eating food is not a sin. It can become a sin if you think it's a sin. There are many things like that. And so, you need to grow up spiritually and understand. You know, you have to understand. You need to clearly understand the difference between what is sin and what can be sin. Money is not a sin. But if you love money, it can become a sin. And so, the love of money is the root of or evil not the sin for instance if someone used money and did something wrong you cannot say because he has used money to do something wrong money becomes a sin if somebody used you know manipulated things use the bible to do something evil in the name of the bible it does not mean the bible is evil so if someone used money or use earring to make a, an image it does not make the ring Evil because in the Bible God told some people to use it in the Bible he told some people not to use it you see they are personal issues you know they are general issues like fornication adultery stealing as I've talked about in the Bible God told Lot and the family that they shouldn't turn back he warned them what happened when Lord's wife turned back he became a pillar of salt but according to the Bible the same place God told Lot not to watch. Abraham, Bible says, Abraham looked at the smoke that was coming from Sodom. He was looking at the same place and yet he didn't become a pillar of salt because that was not a specific instruction that was given to Abraham. It was given to Lot. God can tell you, don't go here. Somebody may go there, nothing will happen to him. But because God has told you not to go, if you go, something may happen. It becomes a personal issue, a um, personal issue with you and God. You know, there are certain things that some men of God don't do. You see, we have, and there are certain things that others do. There are some issues which are personal between you and God, based on your growth and development. Those things are personal issues. Then we have general issues which are governed, you know, which govern everybody. I've mentioned them, fornication, it's, it's a sin. Whoever commits fornication, adultery, if you take someone's wife, stealing, it's a sin. You cannot say it's not a sin unto me because the Bible has made it clear. These are sins. And yet, there are imported sins. People have added their own sins to the Bible. There are things that are not sins, but they can become sin. And yet, Things which are not sins but can become sins, babies in the church have called them sins and they are creating confusion left, right, center. Because God has not called them sin, if you call them sin, Satan will hold you to it. If you violate them, you can be destroyed. It's a spiritual law. So, what am I saying? Don't add your own sin to the Bible, don't call anything sin God has not called sin. There are many things. I don't want to go into them. There are many things. 
if the bible has not said clearly that it's a sin don't call it sin you can judge it or analyze it within the spirit of the word and see whether it gives glory to god or whether it helps you or it helps the body or it advances the cause of the gospel because this these issues are issues of spiritual maturity i don't want to be specific i've just mentioned a few things but there are things you hear people call it it's a sin it's a sin and yet the bible has not called them sin especially under the new testament and yet because people don't understand the dichotomy the difference between the old and the new testament they mix everything together making things you know disorganized and this has led to a lot of people being judgmental and being hasty that is not good and satan is afflicting the brethren refrain from that may god help us may god bless you and strengthen you your brother collins